Howdy gang and welcome to your 13th Python 3 tutorial and in this video we're going to talk a little bit about variable scope. Okay so when I'm talking about scope I'm talking about the scope of a variable and the scope defines the area or the zone that a variable can be accessed in and it's going to be something that you will run into at some point so I thought why not let's do a tutorial on it. So I think the best way to explain this kind of scope is to go through an example. So what I'm going to do is create a variable first of all called my underscore name and set this equal to Ryu. And then I'm also going to define a function and this is going to be called print underscore name and the sole purpose of this function is to print out a name to demonstrate this scope behavior. So we're going to print out a string which will say the name inside the function is and then we're going to tack on the name so my underscore name so we're outputting this name right here when we call a function now outside of the function i also want to do another print statement to say what the name is outside of the function so i'll say print and then i'm going to say outside the function the name is and then again tack on my name Okay, so we also want to call this function because otherwise it's not going to print anything out. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it just above here. So it's going to call this function first, print this statement, and then it's going to print this statement. So let's save it and run it. It's called scope.py. So I'll run that and it says the name inside the function is Ryu and outside the function the name is Ryu as well. So in both cases, we're accessing this variable and that's fine. And this variable is what's known as a global scope variable meaning we can access it from inside functions and from outside the functions because it's defined on the top level it's defined outside of the function therefore it's global right but what happens if we define this variable from within inside this function well let's save it and run it and find out so i'm going to run this file again and we get an error and it says my name is not defined and it's referring to this instance of my name right here when we output it outside of the function because this now has local scope. We've defined it within a function, which means it's only available and accessible in that function. It has local scope. So we can't print it out out here because we don't have access to it. So let's just remove that again and paste it at the top. And now what if we maybe inside the function want to override this my name variable? What's going to happen then? Well, let's try it. I'm going to say my name is equal now to Yoshi. So this right here is going to override my name but is it going to override it globally so that down here as well outside of the function it's updated to yoshi or is it just going to override it locally well let's find out i'm going to save it and run this again and you can see inside the function we get yoshi and outside the function we get ryu so this is only overriding it locally we're creating this local scoped version of this variable here so it's not going to have an effect on this global one here. So what if we did want to override the global one from within a function? Well, what we could do is we could say global, first of all, and then the name of the variable, my name, that we want to override, if you like. So now when we redefine this variable, we're redefining it on the global my name because we've said we're using the global my name there. So now if I save this and run it once more, you can see that inside the function we get Yoshi and outside the function we also get Yoshi. So now we've added this statement in, global my name. We're overriding the global variable right here so that when we come outside the function and run this print statement again, my name is now updated to whatever we assign it right here. All right. So there we go. Just a little tutorial on scope because I think it will come up at some point and it's one of those things that if you don't know what's going on, then it will stump you. So in the next tutorial, we're going to move on now to another data type called dictionaries.